coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 1,120,895. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 16,854. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 6,109, with total confirmed deaths at 144. We anticipate the numbers to change as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich. It's 4 p.m. on Tuesday, February 2nd. LA County has more than 4,200 new COVID-19 cases and 85 new deaths. Close to 5,400 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19, a drop from 8,000 just one month ago. Despite the improvement, the numbers are still very high, especially when only 800 people were hospitalized in late October. The seven day average number of daily cases is continuing its downward trend after peaking last month. January 8th netted more than 15,000 cases, but by the 27th, the seven day average of new cases dropped 67% to less than 5,100. Public health officials caution that we are at a critical moment in the pandemic. LA County issued a revised officer or health officer order on Friday in an effort to guide businesses and individuals to keep from further spreading the virus. They urge everyone to do their part and stay home as much as possible. They're also asking the public to report any safety protocol violations. That number is 888-700. 9995 and calls can be made anonymously. Violations can also be reported online at publichealth.lacounty.gov. Last week, the state announced that it is transitioning to a more centralized distribution system managed by the Blue Shield of California. County officials say the biggest challenge has been a lack of vaccines and they're working with the state to ensure efficient and equitable distribution. For information about vaccines in LA County, including when your turn is coming up, log on to vaccinatelacounty.com. California saw 12,000 new cases today. It's an improvement from the seven day average, which is closer to 17,000 cases. California Health and Human Services Secretary Dr. Mark Galley gave an update this afternoon saying there has been a decrease throughout the state as well. The 14 day positivity rate dropped 38% between mid January and today and hospitalizations went down 28.8% over the last 14 days and is currently at 14,221. ICU hospitalizations also decreased 18.9% over the last 14 days and is now at 3,797. Galley predicts the projected ICU capacity on March 1st will be 43.7%, the highest of all regions in California. He also focused some time today diving into the state's genome sequencing efforts. He says the state continues to actively sequence variants and are building up capacity to do even more. He mentioned two West Coast variants, but clarified later that they are essentially the same with different point mutations. Together, there have been more than 1,000 of those cases identified so far. Galley adds they're investigating whether this variant is also more contagious. The strain first detected in the United Kingdom has now been reported in five California counties. The state's vaccine dashboard shows that more than 3.6 million doses have now been administered. Galley says advancing equity continues to be a top priority and showed a Spanish language video that's been created with Dr. Thomas Aragon, gone, excuse me, who is the director of the California Department of Public Health and the State Health Office. 
Galley also notes that ethnic media is key to reaching more Californians. There are currently 40 ethnic media outlets sharing news and updates about COVID-19 and its vaccines in 18 different languages. More at-home COVID tests are on the way. The Biden administration made a $231.8 million deal with Australian company Illum to boost availability of the resource for Americans. This is the first at-home rapid test for the coronavirus that's available without a prescription. The test can send results to a smartphone within 15 minutes of receiving a sample. The Food and Drug Administration gave emergency authorization to Illum's rapid test in December after seeing 96% accuracy in a U.S. clinical study. Illum officials say their contract with the U.S. Defense Department will help fund construction of the company's first manufacturing plant in the U.S. Once completed, it will produce more than 500,000 tests per day. As a part of the new contract, Illum has committed to providing 8.5 million tests to the federal government. An Illum spokesperson says they'll deliver 100,000 tests per month from Australia until the U.S. facility is built. At that time, U.S. will be able to produce up to 19 million tests every month. The first shipment of the tests is expected to take place this month. Each test costs about $30. If you got your first COVID-19 vaccine shot at a Los Angeles County site and are waiting to get your second dose, check your email. The county began sending out emails on Monday with a link to make an appointment. Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer says nobody else can use the links. So far, more than 85,000 appointment slots have been filled for second doses starting on February 19th. Dr. Ferrer says notifications are also being sent out to those who got their first shot at a site run by the city of LA pharmacy or health clinic. She says all vaccination sites receive enough second doses every week to schedule appointments for those who got their first shots at that site. The US reaches a hopeful milestone this week. More Americans have now gotten at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine than have tested positive for the virus. As of Monday afternoon, 26.5 million Americans got one or both of the currently available vaccines, while 26.3 million Americans tested positive for the virus. The U.S. has been giving out the shots at a faster daily rate than any other country in the world, about one 3.34 million doses a day. Over the past six weeks, 7.8% of Americans have gotten one or more doses and 1.8% are now fully vaccinated. Only a few other countries have crossed this milestone sooner, Israel, the United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates. The city of Torrance now has direct access to vaccine information on its COVID-19 website. If you go to torrentca.gov slash COVID-19, you'll see a number of tabs for business and housing resources, latest executive orders, public service announcements, and the modified bus schedule. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice a new section designated for vaccine information and updates. It includes a link to book an appointment if you currently qualify to get vaccinated. And just under that is another link where you can learn where you are in vaccine distribution. The city added this new section to help residents access the information they need more easily so they can stay healthy and protected during this pandemic. The Capitol Police officer who died after the attack on the U.S. Capitol will lie in honor in the rotunda today. 42-year-old officer Brian Sitnik died after he was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher during the January 6th siege of the Capitol. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced last Friday that his body will arrive at the Capitol at 6.30 p.m. California time, for a viewing for Capitol Police officers overnight. Tomorrow morning, Congress members will have a viewing period followed by a tribute from lawmakers. Schumer and Pelosi said in a statement that, quote, the U.S. Congress is united in grief 
gratitude, and solemn appreciation for the service and sacrifice of Officer Brian Sitnik. The heroism of Officer Sitnik and the Capitol Police Force during the violent insurrection against our Capitol helped save lives, defend the temple of our democracy, and ensure that the Congress was not diverted from our duty to the Constitution. His sacrifice reminds us every day of our obligation to our country and to the people we serve. The tradition of using the Capitol Rotunda to pay tribute to distinguished Americans began in 1852, but historically that honor has been given to military officers and elected officials. More recently, Congress has allowed preeminent citizens to lie in honor. Sicknick will be buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Captain Tom Moore, a 100-year-old World War II veteran who raised millions for the United Kingdom's National Health Service during the pandemic, has died from COVID-19. Captain Tom made headlines last year when he raised almost 33 million pounds or 45 million U.S. dollars by walking laps around his garden for his 100th birthday to raise money for the good cause. His efforts earned him a military promotion and even a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II. The royal family tweeted this picture saying, quote, The Queen is sending a private message of condolence to the family of Captain Sir Tom Moore. Her Majesty very much enjoyed meeting Captain Sir Tom and his family at Windsor last year. Her thoughts and those of the royal family are with them. Moore tested positive for the coronavirus last month after being treated for pneumonia and was taken to a hospital on Sunday. The family announced his passing today, saying, quote, It is with great sadness that we announce the death of our dear father, Captain Sir Tom Moore. The last year of our father's life was nothing short of remarkable. He was rejuvenated and experienced things he'd only ever dreamed of. The family added that while he'd been in so many hearts for just a short time, he was an incredible father and grandfather and will stay alive in their hearts forever. Grocery company Kroger is shutting down two of its stores in Long Beach due to the recently passed Hero Pay in that city. The Ralphs located at 3380 North Los Coyotes Diagonal and the Food for Less at 2185 East South Street are set to close on April 17th. Company officials say both stores were struggling before, but the city's ordinance mandating extra pay of $4 an hour for the employees led to this difficult decision. They call this a misguided action by the Long Beach City Council and adds that it oversteps the traditional bargaining process and applies to some but not all grocery workers in the city. Company officials release a statement that reads in part, quote, the irreparable harm that will come to employees and local citizens as a direct result of the city of Long Beach's attempt to pick winners and losers is deeply unfortunate. We are truly saddened that our associates and customers will ultimately be the real victims of the city council's actions. Kroger has spent $1.3 billion so far to reward associates and implement dozens of safety measures during the pandemic. Long Beach spokesperson Kevin Lee says the city will provide support and resources for the Kroger employees who will be losing their jobs. He also says the California Grocers Association recently filed a lawsuit to have the ordinance declared unconstitutional. A Torrance-based business will be closing the doors to its headquarters here. Edelbrock Group is a manufacturer and distributor of aftermarket auto parts and employs 270 workers at its headquarters. The company sent a notice to the State Employment Development Department saying they're laying off employees from mid-January until the end of March. The Torrance closure affects every one of those 270 employees, most of whom are hourly. The Torrance facility has a state-of-the-art research and development department, testing facilities, and manufacturing operations. A company spokesperson didn't say why they're closing their doors in Torrance, but said some operations will move to San Jacinto about an hour and a half away. Small business owners have another opportunity to get some help during this pandemic. The second round of California's Small Business COVID-19 Relief Grant Program starts today. Any eligible applicant who did not receive funding during the first round will automatically be considered and do not need to reapply. 
Those who qualify for this assistance program are encouraged to apply until Monday, February 8th. For more information, log on to careliefgrant.com. Southwest Airlines is changing its policy that will affect some travelers with pets. It released a statement stating that Mar starting March 1st, it will no longer transport emotional support animals. The revision allows Southwest to only allow service dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of a qualified individual with a disability to travel with the customer. Disabilities include intellectual, physical, sensory, and psychiatric. Also, only dogs will be accepted. No other animal species will be considered. Airport officials say they applaud the Department of Transportation's recent ruling that allows them to make these important changes. They're addressing numerous concerns raised by the public and airline employees regarding the transport of untrained animals in aircraft cabins. Those who have trained service dogs now have to show a complete and accurate DOT service animal air transportation form. It will be available both on the airline's website and at airport locations after booking their travel. For those who still want to bring along emotional support animals, some may be allowed as a part of the airline's existing pets program for an additional charge. Today is Groundhog Day and it looks like more cold weather is on the way. Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow this morning in Philadelphia and as legend holds, that means six additional weeks of winter. The famous groundhog woke up at 7.25 a.m. and made his prediction in front of an audience of 16 people from the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club at Gobbler's Knob. This celebration has been around since 1886 and looked a little different this year due to the ongoing pandemic. There wasn't a big crowd and the event was streamed live. Phil isn't known for being the most accurate. He predicted an early spring for the last two years when it remained very cold where he lives. So far, he's seen his shadow 104 times and not seen his shadow only 20 times. Statistically, he's been correct in his forecasts about half the time over the past 10 years. While Phil is the original groundhog, there are many others like him in various states. Unadilla Bill from Nebraska is known to have the highest accuracy ratings in the prediction business. Hundreds of security jobs are available right now. Allied Universal is hiring people for a variety of openings, including those at COVID-19 vaccination sites. The jobs pay $14 to $28 an hour. A company spokesperson says they provide training and are looking for customer service oriented people. Those who are friendly, have good communication skills and keep positive outgoing attitudes. The company will hold drive up interviews tomorrow, February 3rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center. That address is 1935 Manhattan Beach Boulevard in Redondo Beach. If you can't make that one, the company will be out at the Fairplex Pomona Gate 17 on Thursday and at 1919 Empire Avenue in Burbank on Friday. Both will be at the same time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Their hiring campaign is tied to the rising needs of this growing industry. While a security guard license is typically required in California, vaccination sites are exempt because they're considered traffic control. Out of 750 openings, about 500 of them will be at vaccination sites. Unemployment in LA County currently stands at 11%. Interested applicants can also submit their resumes at jobs at AUS.com. The Torrent City Council will not meet tonight to conduct city business. The meeting has been canceled and the council will meet next on Tuesday, February 9th. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community, feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Check out these adorable handmade Valentine's Day cards from kids in Torrance and neighboring cities. The South Bay mommies and daddies are collecting these thoughtful greetings to deliver to frontline workers and hospital patients. It looks like they've gathered hundreds of cards in time for the holiday. What a sweet and thoughtful way to let people know they're loved. Now, if you have a great story, photo, or video you'd like to share, email us at covid19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. 
Well, that's our update for COVID-19 today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as Jin Chun brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.